They're exciting and they're fun to play with, and there's sort of an intrinsic beauty in bubbles, and they're, they're often represented in, in different types of art. But also, secondly, because there's a lot of physics in there too, and, and I want to try and show you in the next uh, 40 minutes or so that they're not necessarily separate things. Um, it, it's often said that when you learn a little bit more about something that's beautiful, somehow that the beauty is, is lost, that beauty that you saw before, now that you know all the extra science. People think that that perhaps has been damaged, but I would like to show in, in the next little while that that isn't the case. In fact, uh, that the appreciation for <coughs> various things such as soap bubbles can, can be enhanced and you can complement the, the beauty that you already saw in it with this extra knowledge in science. So I hope that by the end of this, you will, some of you will be going home trying and making some yourself and perhaps you will see things in the soap bubbles that you didn't see before and you'll have uh, gained extra perceptions that you hadn't really paid attention to. They were there all the time and you didn't notice them. So that's the idea. Um, it's just a chronology of various images I took from, uh, of <coughs> paintings that feature soap bubbles and they seem to have been painted from around about the 1600s onwards. There's a style of paintings called vanitas, which means uh, vanity I believe, and the idea is, is that the soap bubble represents your mortality, the soap bubbles are very fragile. The intrinsic beauty in a soap bubble is due to the fact that it's fragile. And I hope to show you in the coming 40 minutes how fragile they are. They're exceptionally fragile and it's astonishing that they exist. And as we get through these slides, you see that it's normally, um, there are youthful looking chaps here, uh, boys and girls holding onto bubbles, and it's thought to be a sort of youthful pursuit that I would like to, to Correct that, anybody can give it a go, and it's fun for everybody, I would hope. And if we finish up with, uh, I'll just click through some of these. Um, that's not working one by one. Okay. Um, and we end up with <coughs> this famous painting by Millet, and I thought I'd use it for the advertising of the talk because it was used for the advertising of Pears Soap, and uh, it became one of the most famous images in the world before the internet. So that, there's our beginnings. I thought I'd do some sheets for you though, because um, it's going to be a mixed bag. It's gonna, it's the, the first part I thought could just be fun. We won't actually worry too much about um, trying to explain it in the exact detail. I mean, I'll give you a kind of hand wavy idea of how it works. Um, but the first part is to try and motivate you to be interested in this. And then the, the uh, so that's about the shape of the bubbles, and I'll show you some things that you can do at home very easily, just with uh, water, some soap, and bits of wire. Um, the second part is going to be a little bit more detailed, so that's the, the, the physicists in the room, um, but not to worry, if you're not too keen on that kind of business, there will be um, little hints here every so often letting you know what the hell's going on, so you should, you'll be alright, there's nothing <coughs> to worry about. And the purpose for that is to understand not only the beautiful colours that you see in a soap bubble, but also when you understand why the colours are there, you understand about the size of the bubble. And that's to do with what I said before, it's fragility. And by the end, you'll have an appreciation for uh, why they form shapes. And I'm going to show you things that aren't just spheres. I'll show you a cube bubble and a pyramid bubble as well by uh, the next 15 minutes. The colours, you'll understand why the colours form. Um, on the surface and exactly how thick they are. Right, so without any further ado, you're here all here to see bubbles, right? That's why you're here. So <laughs> let, let, let's, let's crack on. I thought I'd just, I'd just show you that, that we're actually going to get some bubbles just to relieve the tension in the room because immediately when we do a talk like this, everybody thinks, oh no, if he doesn't get a single bubble, it's going to be bad. And we have to sit through. So I'll, I'll try, and, try and get you uh, to, to, to calm and then so that kind of business, right? But these kind of thin, uh, these kind of, um, circular um, nets because they're so large it's hard to actually form a complete bubble but you get to see at least some of the, can you see the colours? You can see the colours on them? Yeah? Quite nicely and if I hold it steady you get some nice big ones. Now on your sheet I've given a list of instructions to how to make these. I've got two vats in, if you look, I think it's, I put it on the uh, well, one of the two sides. I think it's on the immediate right-hand side. Every time over, there's nothing on the back. On the right-hand side, I put a recipe for homebrew bubble juice. And what, what you need to do is, if, if you're going to do uh, things with really big bubbles, you need to use a little bit of glycerol or glycerin. And I think I had a little 
pack it somewhere. Yeah, here you go. This kind of stuff. You pick it up from the baking section of your supermarket. It's next to all the uh, sort of hundreds of thousands of those silver spheres that you put on all those fairy cakes you enjoy to eat. Right? So that's that. You need 10% of that in addition to the regular mix. So you end up with 110%, but it just made the numbers easy for me to tell you. Um, I got mine from the chemistry department. I got various things from various departments to do this talk, but I got some you know, serious stuff. There's some, some glycerol, and I put 10% in this trough. You don't have to make up so much if you're doing big bubbles because you leave it all flat. But what I'm about to show you later with, with this kind of stuff, it's just 98% water, 2%, and I don't work for these people, but fairy liquid or persil <laughs> tends to work uh, very well. And that's because it's a stronger detergent. If you get a, 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 a um, own brand label, then you have to add more, more like 4%. But the tolerance is very, very, um, it, it's very tight. So if you go half a percent either way, it may not work. You may find that you won't get anything. So I put the instructions out, and I, I've got them from a, a chap who's very, very good at this kind of business from the University of Kent. And he works for a royal institution as well. So he emailed me very kindly and gave me the, the secret recipe. You know, be like, uh, be like, I don't know, some some sort of form of pasta, some secret recipe, and then and then they tell you over email. It's very kind of uh, Cyril to do that for me. So there's there's the first thing I want to show you, and you're going to see this again later. This is going to be the, the thing that you see at the end. But um, also, I thought we'd attempt, and I still need practice on this. I'm, I'm going to get better, I hope, with, with time. But I wanted to show you some larger bubbles, and if I manage to get this to unknot, I'll give it a good go. Would you believe that that's the first time I've actually managed to do that? <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, the, the, the technician in the physics department made this um, this morning, and I've been practicing ever since. And uh, that's the first one that actually happened. I'll, I'll pretend that I do it all the time. <laughs> so it looks like it's important that you have to get those uh, pinks to come out the bottom. And this, is a, this could only possibly be an anti-climax, I don't know why I thought I'd do a second one. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll come back to that at the end, and if I finish with enough time for you to hang about, uh, you're welcome to try it yourself. That's just simply two sticks with uh, some holes drilled for a bit of string, and um, there's, there's one piece tied on both ends, and then, and then this one is tied to one end, but free to slide across on the other. And so that's all that is, and then you just dip it into the strong stuff to get the big bubbles. Um, now, the shape is very interesting, and if you look on the uh, other side, the left-hand side of that page, it's got something to do with what's called Plateau's rules. And he was an interesting character. He was very interested in, stu in studying optics around about the 1870s, and he was so interested in studying optics that he actually damaged his retinas, and he became blind. Uh, and he was researching soap bubbles, and he thought he'd carry on, although he was researching the colour of soap bubbles. So he couldn't carry that on, and he tried something else. And what he tried was trying to look at how different, what's called thin films, so a thin film is what's on the soap bubble, so what the soap bubble is, but you can stretch it onto a wireframe such as this. And he investigated how, when you have different wireframes, you get different thin films. And I hope to show you some of these um, later. Um, but first, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about what the surface of the bubble is doing and why it's significant as to its shape. So I've got to, uh, hard to see whether there's actually a film sometimes. There you go. So I've got a funnel here. And this, uh, there you go. That's the first of many disappointments. <laughs> your point of view. So there's a bubble. You need coordination for this. I'm going to try and, I've got a lighter here, and I, I'm going to just very simply show you hopefully that the lighter will move, and if not I'll move it with my hand, uh, due to the air coming from the bubble. There you go, and you can see that slowly. Can you see that? I can see that. And, and that's it. <laughs> I can definitely see it. Double these.